Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations with leaders in digital infrastructure. My name is Emily Scherer for JSA, and I am joined today by Brent Legg. He is the EVP of Connected Nation and Hunter Newby, the co-founder of Connected Nation Internet Exchange Points. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. So Connected Nation has made it clear that closing the digital divide is a huge priority. Um, so I'd love to know how your work with IXPs is helping bridge connectivity gaps, particularly in rural communities? Well, there's been a lot of focus on um, bridging the last mile connectivity you know, divide. Um, and there's a lot of federal money right now flowing to, uh, to solve that part of the problem. But with AI, um, there are other gaps that need to be resolved, right? And specifically latency, right? It's, it's all about reducing latency for generative and inference-based AI. And we can't do that without more neutral points of interconnection across the country. So that's what Connected Nation is seeking to do. Excellent. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to share about that? Well, just to follow on with what Brent said, AI is really a strategic uh, national security imperative. And the lack of neutral interconnection points, the physical layer, inhibits the lack of exchange points at layer two. And this is something that we've been aware of and working on for a long time. Um, and now that we're sort of out of the, the training model phase of AI and really more focused on the inference and generative components, all of a sudden latency became very important, whereas before it wasn't considered as important. Um, so the timing you know, is, is now for us to do this, and it helps rural America, um, but you know, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be built. There's a lot of networks that all have the same problem, the same pain, which is that this is missing, it's lacking. This is not a data center business. This is an interconnection business. And you have to have that first, and then you can build data centers. So. That's right. Great point. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. So AI is actually our next topic, so nice segue there. Um, it's reshaping how networks operate and scale. So how do you see AI playing a role in the development and management of regional IXPs in the future? I'll take that one. Well, as I was saying, um, this is a national security imperative. Um, for the deployment. A lot of people are trying to figure out what the business model is, but I think with DeepSeek and now Tiny Zero, everyone's realizing that AI will become commoditized or is and will become ubiquitous, which is really no different than email. And when we had, you know, simple network mail transfer protocol become a standard ratified by the IETF, you know, almost 30 years ago, uh, all the ISPs interoperated and the email became free. The original business model for email that IBM and MCI mail had was 25 cents per email. <laughs> well, that's what just happened to the concept of, of AI. It'll be embedded in everything because the unit costs have been brought down to incremental above network operations. But at the same time, there's a requirement for infrastructure to be built, and that's new money. So that's either going to be underwritten by a hyperscaler for itself, but then we get down to what we're working on. This is really a, a consensus a community of interest, collective of networks. And you know, I've spent a couple of lifetimes in this industry building carrier hotels, buying carrier hotels, building meet rooms. And now I'm going into cities with these guys yep. that don't have anything. They've yeah. never had a neutral meet point. Yeah. But yet they have populations of several hundred thousand, even a million people. And the closest exchange point is hundreds of miles away. Yeah. So low latency AI is synonymous with inference and generative. And it requires these neutral meet points. No different than airports or train stations where multiple lines meet or bus stations. There's a lot of analogies. Um, but we now need to get on that. I mean, we've been working on this for multiple years. And rural America needs just to catch up on just plain old internet transit, low latency. Now we're talking about AI. So how is that going to be deployed without these neutral meet points. Yeah, and that's what need, we focus on. And it can be. It becomes greater. Right. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Right. Okay, great. Now, Hunter, you're speaking on a panel about accelerating deployment across digital infrastructure. So what's one barrier you believe the industry needs to overcome first, and how is that going to happen? Just one. Uh, <laughs> as many as you want. Well, no. All right. So one would be supply chain transparency. Yeah. Uh, Mark Anzi gave the keynote today. He said supply chain is still a problem, has not been resolved. That is true. That's materials. But just behind that's labor. I've had a lot of different uh, data points. Uh, when we talk about job creation, um, labor, the lack of skilled labor, particularly um, electricians, electrical people. Right. There's some number. It's either 20,000 or 22,000 uh, lacking. 
We need skilled electrical contract labor to do the work to build all of these facilities. Well, that's a great opportunity, but it's a huge problem that we, we lack it. And of course, the lack of the neutral meat points <laughs> uh, first and foremost, but supply chain, I think, supply chain transparency, which is what the panel is about um, and how to address it and what tools can be used uh, to see into the supply chain of the component manufacturers, you know, that make the generators and the transformers and the switch gear and the copper and the bus bar and, and everything. And then, like I said, the labor, the people that actually do the work. Right. Huge problems. Needs to be coordinated, organized, need transparency, need visibility. Otherwise, everybody's competing with each other. Yeah. Everyone's oversubscribing the market. The prices go up. Nobody meets dates. Everything's delayed. Right. Need to work towards a common goal. It would be nice together. if yeah. they did. Yeah. I, I'm working on that, too. I'm hopeful that that could occur. Yeah. Otherwise, this is all very protracted. And if the U.S. is really truly in competition with China on AI and all of this, and they're authoritarian and can just dictate from the top down, and we've got a thousand different competing companies, yeah. we're not really going to be the leader in the world in this, like uh, Vice President Vance was saying in France a few weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Although Absolutely. I do believe that we can be, we need to get organized. Right. That's right. That's right. Thank you for sharing that. Now, um, what time is that panel tomorrow? Do you want to share? Uh, today, the panel is at, I'd have to check my phone, which I won't do right now. <laughs> but like this four. Okay, this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, four, schedule. 4.30, okay. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And Brent, Connected Nation recently announced an ambitious plan to, to deploy 125 IXPs yeah. nationwide. That's that's fantastic. So what's the strategy behind selecting locations, and how are you going to measure the success in those locations? Yeah, absolutely. So there are 14 states, actually, that don't have neutral meet points for network interconnection, which is uh, kind of a shocking statistic, right? That there are that many places across the country that are really wholly dependent upon a big metro area several hundred miles away. Um, that's just not acceptable. It's not going to meet the goals that we're trying to achieve in this race to, to beat China in AI. So we have to create more neutral meet points across the country. So we've identified 125 cities uh, where we believe the data tell us uh, that IXPs need to go. Um, those are in cities like Wichita, Kansas, and Lexington, Kentucky, and Huntsville, Alabama, and Boise, Idaho, and places like that. Cities that are fully dependent upon a big metro several hundred miles away right now from a network interconnection standpoint. So if a city has a public research university, um, has a commercial airport, there's enough economic activity occurring in that region to support commercial air service. Um, you know, where there's a, a convergence of uh, fiber networks, both long haul, medium haul, uh, metro networks already. Um, these are the places where the data tell us that these facilities are needed. And we've got to make a measurable impact in reducing latency far below 10 milliseconds for AI to really work. Right. I just want to follow on that and make one point of clarification for the record. This is Connected Nation Internet Exchange Points. An IXP in our definition and nomenclature, which is found in the definitions in the industry, is a building or a room. Right. So we build buildings. Okay, this is infrastructure, dirt, building, generator, UPS. Yeah, man, and also. IX in Internet Exchange is a layer two Ethernet switch. So our partner on the IX side is DKIX. They're the world's largest internet exchange operator. DKIX is an IX. We build IXPs. What what is a a building that's built and designed, some people call data centers, we don't, because it's not about power and servers, it's about interconnect, but some people call it co-location or meet me rooms, which is where I come from, carrier hotels. The designation IXP comes from the fact that an IX is in the building. So the neutral meet points that Brent is referring to that we've identified are actually cities and public land grant universities that have a population size that would justify having an IX present there. Yes, and the, the switch. Reason, yes, the switch right. inside of a building that, inside we, of build, a building. that we design, right. build, own, operate as a professional business for multi-tenant networks instead yeah. of a single tenant, which is typically sort of data center. But I make that distinction because there's a lot of confusion in the market. What's an IX? What's an IXP? And it isn't that there isn't some physical layer. Well, in Wichita, there isn't at all. But in certain places, there might be a data center. But if it lacks that layer two switch that actually helps route the internet traffic, the IP traffic locally, right. that's the problem. Right. You can't get the reduction of latency if the IX doesn't exist. And if it isn't robust and supported and have really the, the weight 
of the major autonomous system networks, the AS numbers, of the biggest networks, the cloud providers, the content providers, right. locally. That's where uh, cities like Wichita have to backhaul all the way to Kansas City, Missouri, out of the state, or Denver, Colorado, yeah, or Denver, out of the yeah. state. And Wichita is a very real city, very significant aerospace engineering city with a lot of big companies, and the internet isn't there. Yeah. It's yeah. hundreds of miles away. Yeah. That's got to be resolved. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you for making that clarification. And great that you're working with DKIX, like you said, a yes. great IX provider. Indeed. Yeah, in order to the biggest in the world. estimation, humbly, yeah. Yeah. the best. I love them all. I have a lot of friends that do that stuff. They are the largest, most professional organization in the world for yeah. what they do, cover the globe. Yeah. Fortune 500 companies use them. Right. I didn't want to build another IX myself. Yeah. I didn't even like right. think that I was like, I looked at it, but why not just work with the best? Right. right. And where we go, they go. That's right. right. And we have to scale. We've got a huge yeah, problem to, to solve. We've yeah. got to do it quickly. Yeah. Uh, and DKIX provides that ability. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, a great initiative. 125 IXPs uh, coming. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing that news with us. Thank you for being here today. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for hosting really us. Really appreciate it. And to all of our viewers, stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking. Thank you. Thank you.